Good day, grade 12s, and welcome to this special video uh, where we're looking at the exam tips for your practice being provided by the Department of Education. So um, I've just taken one or two pics because I'm going to do a video on this one, on your theory, and then also with regards to your theory on what you don't need to learn. Okay, so are, these are going to be three very important uh, videos, and uh, I hope you find value in that. Okay, so this is for your prac. So let's let's go and have a look at this. So for the prac, here they're telling us it's going to be divided up into Word, Excel, databases, and web development. In other words, HTML. And then it's going to be a section on general. Okay. So 45 marks is going to be for Word. Usually that's one or two questions. The same for your spreadsheets. Um, databases is usually just one question. Web development, remember, with HTML, they will give you the website itself and you are going to modify the website so they might have coding that is incorrect that you need to then change um, insert a picture you know change a layout pop in a um, horizontal line you know things like that and then general general will be where you might be asked to copy and paste certain things you might have to do a mail merge um, you might need to change the the author of a document you know those those sort of things that's generally what you find in, in general now having said that please remember i did mention this to you on the channel before you don't have to start with question number one you can start with whatever you are strongest in so usually i would advise learners you know what go and start with general get it done get it out of the way then web development and that's just because these are 15 marks each okay so go in if you're not too strong in web development obviously start with something else but go and get the small things done in general then go through and start with whichever of these three word excel or powerpoint uh, sorry not powerpoint access whichever one of the three you are strongest in okay go and do the things you can mark it off on your question paper and then you can always go back to the things you're not too sure about but at least the ones you've ticked off on your question paper you you'll know listen these things i'm fully aware of i know exactly how to do it i'm going to get those marks this also helps you in terms of your time okay so here they just tell us clarification of existing and additional content for paper one learners may be required to extract files from compressed folders there's another tip either as part of the exam or they may be required to extract unzip a compressed folder to access all the data to be used in the exam there they give us an example um, of what it could be named learners must do the following okay don't worry too much about that open they'll usually give you a password if there is one that's just getting to your data so let's look at this when it comes to word they want us to know how to collect data via electronic forms okay microsoft forms or google forms you should be able to use microsoft word processing for electronic forms legacy controls should be used to answer questions Right, regarding these forms including uh, radio buttons so you know with regards to word that'll mean using the developer tab and the control section so maybe let me just go into word and get a blank document remember we want to use our developer tab so if we are answering questions like yes or no or we have to put that in place um, that we can't actually do that maybe we're going to go up to developer we're going to go to controls and they'll tell us which one to use so i'm just going to use the checkbox for now um, and i'm going to go to no checkbox again and you can see when i click in it um, i can either check yes or no okay then referencing features including index and table of figures so let's quickly look at that let me just delete this over here and remember what do we do we go to the references tab our table of contents there we go we can insert an automatic table of contents obviously there's nothing here however if i put in a heading and i format that we go up to my home tab i'm going to select the style heading one nothing happens why because remember with the table of contents video i've got to go and i've got to update my table of contents and then it brings it in so the table of contents, the automatic one, will only bring in items that has been formatted as headings. If I take this and I just give it normal um, formatting and I update my table, 
look what happens it's gone okay so it might be a heading to you but if it's not formatted as a heading it will not come up in your automatic table of contents then they also talk about a table of figures okay so let's insert a table of figures and you can see there we can go and modify obviously exactly what we want what type of leaders we want you know all those type of things I'm just going to click okay there's obviously no table of figures entries found right so let's go here and let's say this is hitting 1.2 can i can i just do that and then assume that okay well let me just go and format it and i'm going to format it as that and i'm going to update that you can see nothing's there okay it's updating the automatic table of contents but not the table of figures so what do i actually need for that well what i'm going to need is to go to the references tab and i'm going to have to insert a caption so i'm going to go here and i'm going to insert a caption and i'm going to say figure one heading one okay and i'm going to click ok now i go up to my caption section i say update the table boom and there i've got my table of figures that's been updated to that do you see again learners you must format the the headings or the captions you 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 have to do all of that first and then we, uh, with your table of contents you have to update it and you have to update your table of figures as well so um, you might be going through the document popping in different captions and then at the end they usually want you to put in a table of figures okay so all right so i hope that helps all right let's go back to the document all right then we go to our spreadsheets okay spreadsheets function versus spreadsheet formula for examination purposes in cat a function is viewed as a single bolt in a predefined formula here they give us some basic date and time functions so we know we need to know our date and time functions we need to know how to name our cells and cell ranges we just open up excel here okay so we need to know how to reference our cells we need to know our layout now ribbon you know what we can use for which particular purpose um, our formulas we need to know our count ifs and some ifs right remember count is only going to um, add up let's say the number of cells or the number of cells that have something in it when we're talking about sum, we're talking about adding up the contents okay so we need to know the difference between that um, functions such as ifs you know lookups like your v lookup H lookups, all these things, rand, rand between, upper, lower. Um, so we need to look at all these things. You need to remember all of these or not to work with them. Um, I have covered these in previous videos, so please go and check that out. If you've got questions, don't be afraid to ask me in the comments or check out the Facebook page and you can always chat on that over there. Then on uh, databases, they just mention that you need to be able to work within the database and interpret it and just follow the instructions. That, that's all they're really saying. Um, with regards to HTML, the underlying tag, they want you to remember that. Okay, Links to bookmarks, emails, websites, and files. That's going to be your href tag. right? And then cite the tag to acknowledge the sources um, for the pet. Okay, But again, that's that's to do with the pet, but these are some of the tags that you must know. And they just mentioned here at the bottom, transfer of skills. Skills learned in one application may be tested in another application. For example, conditional formatting or data validation taught in Excel could appear in Access. And so can lists or combo boxes be examined across the applications. Find and select taught in Word can appear in Access or Excel. Candidates are required to distinguish between closely related skills, for example, shade and shadow. Um, as per 3.2, the total mark for the prac is 150 marks and no longer 180 marks. Okay, so that should be around about two and a half hours then for that particular paper. Sometimes, usually I know they'll, they'll give you three hours for the 180 mark. The change will be accommodated in the paper as follows. Number of subsections will be reduced. Um, so that learners can obviously complete uh, the paper in time so grade 12s that is it for your prac those are um, some of the tips that they've given so please do your best go through all the content um, on the 
YouTube channel here. If there is anything you need, don't be afraid. Reach out to me. Um, let me know in the comments. Let me know on my Facebook page, Cat with Mr. Hembry, if there's anything you still need me to go through. But if not, all the best, good luck, and I know you are going to pass this exam, and not just pass it, but pass it well.